two brothers. No, how could we be? Well, how come you always dress alike? We do not always dress alike. Then how can you always call me to find out what I'm wearing? Oh, don't kid yourself. Why would anybody want to dress like somebody else? Uh, Search me. I couldn't tell you. By the way, Jerry, what are you wearing to the game on Friday? Uh, my plaid shirt. Red plaid or green? Why? <laughs> uh, just curious, that's all. <laughs> It is not uncommon in friendships for one friend to want to be like the other friend. Oh, that book's a big joke. I think it makes sense. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Put on a smile and be a friend to somebody new. Take a swallow of this, Vince. It'll clear up your bad breath. No! <laughs> not trying to embarrass you. Only a real friend will tell you when you have bad breath. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad you dropped in, Aaron. Maybe you can convince Vince that I'm telling him the truth, because I'm his friend, and only a real friend will tell you the truth about yourself. Really? Sure. Now, do you see this poster? 
there's a little story that goes along with this, and it goes something like this. Once there were a pair of boys who came from a little town called Friendly Acres. Their names were Billy and Sam, and everyone thought they were brothers. Are you two brothers? No! How could we be? Well, how come you always dress alike? We do not always dress alike. Then how come you always call me to find out what I'm wearing? Oh, don't kid yourself. Billy did dress like Sam. He wanted to be just like him in every way he could, and he tried to imitate him. Hi, girls. How you doing? Hi, girls. How you doing? Hi, Sam. Billy. We're fine. Isn't Sam cute? He sure is. What's wrong with me? Aren't I cute? Billy tried so hard to be just like Sam. Everybody liked Sam, but they could hardly stand Billy. Watch this, girls. I'm going to do a swan dive off the bridge. Anyway, Sam, we were wondering if you'd like to go to the fair with us today. I'm almost ready to die. <laughs> There's going to be an arm wrestling competition, and a turtle race, and a barbecue. Sounds great. I'll be diving any minute now. Billy, what are you doing? Sam. Can Billy come too? He's feeling pretty sad. All right, if you want him to, but we can't stand him. Come on, Billy. You're gonna go to the fair. Oh, great. Guess you girls were too embarrassed to ask me yourselves. Probably thought I'd turn you down. Of course I'll go. Oh, uh, yeah. Poor Billy. He just didn't understand how to make friends. That was the difference between he and Sam. Sam had learned the secret of being popular. If you want to have friends, then you have to be a friend. When they arrived at the fairgrounds, the festivities were already well underway. Poor Billy. He always had to show off. That's how he thought he'd get people to like him. But instead, nobody wanted to be near him. Don't make me walk beside him. Well, I sure don't want to stand beside him. <laughs> and so it went all day long. Billy showed off at the fair. The girls stayed close to Sam because it's nice to be with someone who isn't a show off. Why don't you try, Sam? Okay, I will. I'd like to compete. All right, step up on the scale and Sam, what's your weight? 103 pounds. 103, okay. You can arm wrestle Ben. He's already up on the stage. Okay? All right. Okay. This is going to be cool. We're going to have Ben and Sam up here for our next bout, please. Well, Sam, you sure did. It was nothing. I got a super man. <laughs> <laughs> 
would like to arm wrestle too. You would? Okay, step up on the scale and see how much you weigh. 49 pounds, okay. You arm wrestle Toby, and that's the next weight class coming up. I give you a candy slice if you let me win. Forget it, man. I don't eat junk food. <laughs> Ready? Go! Yourself. But you're just making a fool out of yourself. Thanks a lot. Some friend you turned out to be. You've got to quit trying so hard to make friends and just be a friend. That's what I do. Then they'll like you. You'll see. They will? Sure they will. Just be a friend? Yeah. I'm only saying this because I am a friend. Only a real friend will tell you the truth about yourself. Sure? Right. Only a real friend will tell you that you have bad breath. Do I? Kind of. I can smell onions. Talk about kicking a dog when he's down. I don't know how to help you anymore. Just leave me alone. Billy left in a huff, and the others went on to watch the turtle races. That's a long way. Billy walked around by himself thinking. Only a real friend will tell you if you have bad breath. Excuse me, do I have bad breath? I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, it's fine, really. I do have bad breath. Sam told me the truth because he wanted to help me. Then he noticed a poster on the wall of one of the concession booths. He finds a friend that's found the treasure. The faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kindnesses of an enemy. Sam is a real friend. I'd like this picture. Billy bought the poster, and then he went on home. It wasn't long before the turtle races were over, and Sam and the girls returned to Friendly Acres. We really had a great time with you today, Sam. You sure did. Well, thanks for asking. I had a great time, too. I only hope I haven't lost Billy as a friend. I was only trying to help him. Don't worry. That guy's a mess. Yeah, he's really got problems. No, well, he needs a real friend like we all do. Well, I guess I'll be seeing ya. But... Yeah, I guess you're right, Sam. Bye. 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 Yeah. Sam's heart felt a little heavy as he walked up the lane to his house. Then he caught sight of a poster stuck beside the door. Who finds a friend has found a treasure. For faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kindness of an enemy. Thanks for being my friend, Sam. Signed, Billy. Sometimes it's tough being a friend, but it's worth it. Story, Dirk. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Dirk, would you mind if I had the poster? I'd like to give it to a guy who's really been a friend to me. Well, certainly you can have it. There Thank you go. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dirk. Bye. Bye, Bye now. Hey, to meet you, man. You want some of this? I tell you, it's tough, but it's worth it. <laughs> That's the idea. Good. <laughs> Oh, uh, great! 
Dad, I'm eating vegetables. What kind? Ah, uh, onions. Oh no, not another one. <laughs> is looking and tasting great. Oh, Egbert, you're wild. Don't huh? yes. What? What do you mean? I never. Oh, it's time for the craft at Kaleidoscope. Someone oh, turn on the set. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh Egbert, you have onion bread. at Harbor Front. <laughs> Dressing up in costumes can be lots of fun, and today we're going to learn how to make our own masks. Isn't that right, Sue? That's right. Today's mask, you will need a plastic jug, house, household jug that you'll find at home. Uh, things like with fabric stuff. That's right, fashion. yeah. You need some glue, yarn, odds and ends that you can decorate your jug with. Now the jug has to be cut a section out of the back. You leave the handle on so you can hold it. Then you cut a mouth and eyes. Now it's really difficult to cut this plastic, so maybe you should get your mother or your father to help you. A sharp pair of scissors should do it, if not a sharp knife. But it, yeah. it re you really should use some help. You should draw around it though, right? Yes, it's a lot easier if you draw the eyes and the mouth and then cut them out. Okay? Now to decorate it, let's see, you can use, oh, anything to put a nose on. We have some styrofoam bits here that can be glued on and then painted. Use yarn. Yarn for hair? Yeah, for the hair. Glue, glue it on or tape it on, whichever is easier. Even put on a mustache, maybe. You can also use cotton batten and make a big, big fluffy beard and glue it on. You can use a tin plate for a hat and you can put things in the hat. You can cut slits out on the side here very carefully, cut out cardboard ears, and put them in for the slits, for ears. Here's one that we've made up. Now this one has a section from an egg carton for its nose and painted red. We used a pie plate for the hat and then some extra plastic flowers we found around the house and yarn for the hair. And it's just been taped on. How would you like My to try favorite. it on? <laughs> if you would like instructions for today's craft, write to us. Be, but get ready, because it will be coming up real soon. And don't miss it. And that's just one of the exciting crafts we have for you. I hope you'll join us again next week. Thanks, Sue. Maybe it looks more like Gert. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, everybody, let's sing. Yeah.
I guess I did eat a few. It smells like the whole patch. Oh. Now, Kurt, at first, you read in your fellowship book that only a real friend cares enough to tell you the truth. It's really true, Jerry. This is for you. Thanks for being my friend. A businessman was driving from one big city to another. Along the way, he stopped to give a couple of hitchhikers a ride. They attacked him, stole all his money and his clothes, and left him lying half dead beside the road. preacher came along, slowed down to see what had happened, and even though he saw the men lying there, he just passed by. Soon after, a member of a local church arrived on the scene. He walked over, looked at the battered businessman lying there, but then he too went on. A little later, a despised motorcyclist came roaring by. And when he saw the man, he felt deep pity. Oh. Kneeling beside him, the motorcyclist put some soothing ointment on his wounds and bandaged them. Then he took the man on his motorcycle to the nearest hospital where he stayed with him through the night. next day, the motorcyclist gave the hospital a hundred dollars and told them to take care of the man. If his bills run higher than that, I'll pay the difference the next time I roll into town. Which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the injured man? If you say the one who was kind enough to help, you're right. Now, you go and do the same. You know, if we want to have friends, we have to be a friend like that man. I'll be late getting home. See you at the ball game, Erin. I'll be wearing my red plaid shirt. Bye. Sure, Later. sure. Whatever. <laughs> Why don't you wear yours? I don't need to dress like Jerry. I'm glad to be me. <laughs> Be my guest. What are friends for, anyway? <laughs> 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 